put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Jean-Claude Van Damme goes AWOL and as a Street Fighter earns the nickname Lionheart and we see if putting your money on him is indeed the wrong bet. Yeah, this movie has a lot of titles. Seriously though, Lionheart movie review. Jean-Claude Van Damme stars as Lyon. He starts out a legionnaire and soon moves on to some blood sport. Yeah, some of his movies seem similar. I'm starting over again. Yes, he is in the French Foreign Legion in North Africa and he finds that his brother has been attacked brutally in a drug deal gone wrong in LA and as the as the foreign legion withholds his letters and won't let him see his brother he goes AWOL he he intends to help his sister-in-law and her daughter, who are now on their own. He takes work on a tramp steamer headed to the U.S. and two legionnaire officers are sent after him. He, he meets Joshua, an organizer of street fights, and it's clear that Joshua himself used to be a street fighter, but it didn't quite go well. He has a bit of a limp and yeah, you know, it's that's what can happen if if you spend a lot of time in that circuit. So yes, he befriends Joshua and from these more simple street fights that are organized by Joshua and like Joshua introduces him to Cynthia who organizes fights enjoyed by the rich elite. There's a one of the first fights we see involving you know where the rich elite they're basically standing in a circle around these street fighters and a punch land, you know, the lands on one of these fighters, you know, leads to blood spurting out and a number of droplets hits, you know, hit the face of this young blonde in the crowd and at first she's like stunned. It, it suddenly, it got to be very real for her and, you know, within a few seconds she touches her face to the blood and licks it and it's, yeah you really get a sense of these you know twisted rich people they're they're used to just you know they they throw some money at people and yeah people will do whatever these rich people want them to do and they have these you know they, it goes along with with the cocaine addictions and you know yeah, the the very promiscuous sex lives and such. You know, this is rich people feel that they can get away with this kind of thing, so they take it in. Now, Leon does not want to be violent, but he does find that it's the best way to make money, and he is determined to help out his remaining family with money in any way he can. Last minute notes yet again. 
it's worth noting that the strongest relationship in this, the one that sees the most development, and yeah, just is the most has the most impact is easily the friendship, which is clearly platonic between Leon and Joshua. And Joshua is this, you know, he's he's. He's a black guy and he's from the streets, so he is constantly speaking like a black man from the streets in a, you know, in a big town in the U.S., a big city in the U.S., so, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty fun. And somewhat like in your Universal Soldier 1, you know, he's the chatty one, and Leon has somewhat limited dialogue. It, it's mostly very early on, but throughout he says less than he could. It's nowhere near as limited as Universal Soldier, but they, they still have that fun kind of contrast, you know. Now, the Lyon's, excuse me, biggest the shortcoming, you might say, is his big heart, which Joshua also points out. Now, there are some definite Hollywood aspects to this. Now, but, yeah, it's... Leon is nicely characterized as he's neither flawless nor a total screw-up. Like, he's made some mistakes, but he's trying to fix them and yeah, you know, he the the movie nicely avoids either pitfall of you know neither trope, neither easily characterized, yeah. Now and the the movies, you know, like a lot of these you know, 90s movies, there's this strong theme of family, you know, which is also true for a number of 90s action flicks. Now... There are a lot of fights in this, and they're not all from the, the street fighting kind of thing, so... You know, it's not like you're just waiting for the next fight in order to get to the next, you know, to the next organized fight in order to get to the next action scene. The, you know, that would also not be that interesting, you know. It, in that case, you might almost just, you know, want to play a, you know, fighting competition game. Now, he is a bit of a loner, you know and he does not necessarily respect authority and most of the movie he has almost no power and in general this really shows what happens to the powerless when you know dealing with the powerful there's there's that relationship the the powerless and the powerful and what the powerful can get from the powerless and can do to the powerless as you can maybe already tell, I really like this film. I was a fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme in, you know, when I was a kid in the 90s. Ironically, although typical for me, that doesn't mean that I've seen anywhere near all his films. Yeah, it's basically, you know, I don't necessarily seek out. If, if they don't fall into my lap, I don't necessarily watch stuff from people I'm a fan of. It's, yeah, don't know. Now, the, you know, this, this starts out like one of the typical, you know, 90s action flicks with this kind of thing of, you know, the the husband or otherwise you know male provider of you know the the one of the major female characters has died and the action hero comes in to take over and 
you know, in this, you know, there's maybe, it might lean towards that, but it's very clear that that is not a perfect solution. The bad that happened cannot be undone. You know, life happens, but sometimes you can improve, but not fix things. And it's also very noteworthy that when Leon gets to where his brother is, to the hospital, not only has his brother died, so there's not that kind of, you know, last minute, you know, dramatic goodbye where he says, get the people that did this to me. In fact, Leon can't get revenge. There are, you know, the, 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 the brother was not in any condition to give a, a description of, you know, the, the people involved. The, the doctor says, you know, it could be, could be a, a drug dealer, could be a, you know, another drug user. We don't know. And, you know, there's, yeah, there's just, there's not a lot of evidence and it makes sense that there isn't. He was also the only person in this drug deal gone bad that was on his side, basically. You know, everyone else there was against him, you might say. Now, this, that covers that. I don't know if you can somewhat hear the construction work going on in the background. As far as I can tell, my voice, you know, is is loud enough on the recording that, you know, you're not missing anything I'm saying. Because that would be awful. Yeah, I don't really, I, I'm not certain when they're going to be done. And yeah, so that's, this is okay, how it's going to play out. Now, this has Jean-Claude really plain to his strength. He's basically a silent, imposing physical presence. He's reserved, driven, you know, there's not necessarily... Yeah, like, like I said, you know, he, he has a big heart. But at the same time, he's also willing to really... Yeah, put himself through a lot in order to get through things. You know, the, the work on the tramp steamer, that's hard work, you know. Now, the, the big heart that he has is really brought out by his sister-in-law and especially her adorable, cute little daughter, five-year-old named Nicole. And yes, that is sappy, but it works. We we forgive it, and it's just. I'm sorry. If this little girl does not move you, you have no heart. You are made of stone, and not even, you know, not even the the good kind of stone like like the rock fighter with with his big strong hands. At least they look like. I'm I'm just yeah. You're 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 a golem or or something. You you are an unfeeling machine. Anyway, Jean Claude helped write the story, and it's very clear that this was a personal project. This has Brian Thompson as the main muscle of Cynthia, and he is also this really physical, commanding presence, which you know, as per usual, when he's not given more dialogue than he is here. Now, the female roles in this are quite, you know, st strong female characters, each and every one. The, you know, they hold their own, they are fiercely defensive of their loved ones, you know, they don't need rescuing. The, the only reason that the... I struggle to remember her name, but the 
the, the sister-in-law, the only reason she has trouble with finances is that the, the medical bills were, you know, a lot. And it's not, you know, she has a job. She is making money, and she's not, like, wasting them or anything. And the thing is, it's kind of like when when Leon shows up, she feels that he really abandoned the, you know, her and his brother, and she doesn't really want to take his help. And it's not this kind of frustrating, you know, come on, just, you know, you know, you're not annoyed with her character. You really respect her decision in that and there's a yeah it's just you understand where she's coming from and it's again you know Leon kind of did screw up in his past and he's now trying to make amends now and and at the same time the you know without the the female character's sexuality being gone they're not really objectified. There, there is one scene with women in bikinis, but really, if this movie is, you know, putting on like, you know, something for the the audience to stare at, it's probably the, you know, these these guys fighting each other. You know, all of them fit, and some of them you know, half naked, so, yeah, basically, Cynthia has sexuality, but it's under her control, like, she'll dress in a very sexual manner, but there's no sign of basically her being forced into that, or her having to, she is entirely in control of her sexuality, and basically, She's one of these rich people, one of these powerful people, and she gets what she wants. And if she doesn't, whoever's preventing her from that is going to pay. And it doesn't feel like a woman scorned kind of stereotype. It's she's a character who wields a lot of power and respect, and it that could easily have been a man. The the fact that it that it's played by a woman shows that women can you know, in fact, hold that position of power. And every character in this is a human being. Like, you know, there are maybe one or more antagonist characters, but you understand where they're coming from. No one is just, like, cartoonishly evil. Now, this is the type of film that makes a lot of sense for Jean-Claude Van Damme and others like him. Make it about him fighting, but add some dramatic weight to that. So, we get to see what we want to see from him, from a movie starring him, which is see him kick ass using, using his fight, fighting style. And, at the same time, you know, not actually a bad movie, you know, this, this this isn't Street Fighter, you know, so, yeah. And I'm not certain, but I feel like the quest was also kind of, you were just waiting for the next fight scene, and that, it's been years since I watched it, though, but, yeah. It's maybe not the best sign for a movie about, you know, a great fighter where you're kind of wondering, might he die in the story? To open with this great fighter, you know, many years later, and still really able to kick ass, it just really undermines the tension of the film, and I'm getting off topic. This is a film that really does make us care. Yes, our lead is badass, but he may have to take beatings, he may have to suffer to make his way. Like, you know, the tramp steamer work, yeah, that's that's not easy work. And and at the very start, we also see him, you know, as a legionnaire, working, working hard. You know, this is not a man who just, yeah, you know, he, it's, it's hard work. He, you know, he has to really sweat and apply himself in order to get by. And once he makes it to the big city, he's not necessarily going to be just 
set. You know, he's still a street fighter. It's dangerous and he doesn't necessarily make that much money. It's not, you know, you do a few fights and then you retire. Say, no, no, no. He has to keep fighting. And it's, yeah, it, it takes a lot out of him. And he's not just easily defeating one guy after another. There, you know, there are times where we really worry. Might he lose this fight? Or might he be seriously hurt at the end of this fight? And we are largely spared the extreme endurance and ability of these star vehicles. This is tense ambient exploration of this underground environment where you're at the mercy of your contacts. You know, gladiatorial battles for the amusement of rich people from various countries, which to some is a way of life. And this really does get across. Like, you know, there are some of them speak German, some of them are, you know, very clearly like there are Asians and just, yeah, various ethnicities and just, but clearly all rich, and it's a great contrast, of, you know, in addition to being this very realistic image, to have these, you know, sweaty, half-naked, you know, lower-class commoners fighting each other, and then you have these, you know, fur-wearing, you know, Armani suit-wearing rich people who rather than just looking fancy as they do when they're not you know in secret when they're not again doing coke or watching people break each other's bodies they're actually they're shouting they're cheering for these guys you know there's there's a sense of primal energy these are not you know above these you know these are not people who are so above the rest of us and who have refined taste no 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 they want to see violence they want to see something just again because they're not working in a place where they can really feel that they're work they don't have calluses on their hands they they have you know i'm not trying to demonize rich people there it's the the rich people in the movie you know which again not necessarily, you know, hashtag not all are rich people, not all richers. It's a, it's the ones who really get drunk on their power, you know. But yeah, you can tell these are people who have not necessarily worked hard a day in their life. These are, yeah, these are people who can't really experience this kind of thing unless they attend something like this. And again, this isn't boxing, this isn't wrestling, both of, you know, both of which are very, you know, are, are sports where you can really get hurt. You know, not just theater, well, okay, that boxing is at least sport, but these, you know, these are basically very, you know, a lot of these people are very poor and the, the fighters and very they, they basically don't have any other option you know it's not glamorous it's not pretty you know you'll have blood spraying on these people's faces it's yeah you know it's it's from being all the way at the top you know better socially better to to going all the way down to again the prime not just you know, lower class, they, they don't just sit watching bad sitcoms. No, they actually, you know, with, with a beer and, you know, both feet on the on the table or something. No, no, no. They ask. Now it's not like I'm demonizing poor people. Yeah. To me, everyone's a human being, much like in, in the movie. You know, the, they, they don't just go for what amuses the... the you know, the, the poor people, no, 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 they want to get down on this primal level. And the, you know, the fighting is great, you know, both choreography and execution. Now, the, the technical aspects of this are average. The, the locations are quite nice, and, 
you know, the, yeah, you know, clothing, basically, you know, you, you can tell these people are rich, and there are more locations in this than need be, you know, there's, there's a short clothes shopping montage, which can't have been inexpensive, you know, they, they had to get all those different clothes, and, you know, they were filming inside a clothing store, and, yeah, clothing store, and, again, this starts in North Africa, in a French Legion outpost, or base, or something like that, you know, it doesn't spend a lot of time there, but they still had to actually go there and film in, you know, not, it might not actually be in North Africa, but it's an actual desert, and it looks like a Legionnaire outpost, you know, when they could have just opened the movie with him on a tramp steamer, and not long after he says that he was a, a Legionnaire, you know. I already mentioned that this really plays to Jean-Claude Van Damme's strengths. In addition to, you know, the, the limited dialogue, this does also actually make him French. And in general, the, the, the family is French. You know, the, the last name is Gautier, and his brother, I don't remember his name, and he doesn't say a lot, but I'm almost certain he's supposed to be French. And there are times where, you know, Leon and his sister-in-law will speak French to each other briefly and such, you know, and... Yeah, there are times where Lyon kind of reverts to speaking French a little bit and such. And there's a... Yeah, you know, the, he's not amazing with the English language. It's, it's the accent and the, the pronunciation and yeah, yeah. It, but when you don't give him an awful lot of dialogue and when you don't give him... In this, you know, like, like I said in the Universal Soldier, he gets to, you know, play an innocent character, which he can do, you know, and again, in real life, he seems like a nice enough guy, you know, there's there's definitely an ego there, and he, he can be a bit of a jackass, but, you know, at his core, he is a nice guy, you know, and... Yeah, he can he can portray that well, and the you know, yeah. In addition to that, he basically just has to be really determined, you know, intense in the fights and such. And yeah, he can he can do that. You know, there there aren't a lot of complexities. He's well, he's he's, he's kind of a loner. He's <sighs> Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't say a lot. He's had a hard life. He's done, he's gotten by, by himself. Early on, he doesn't even really want much to do with Joshua. So, yeah, he doesn't really depend on other people. He, he does what he feels is right, and he doesn't really expect others to chip in or anything. So, that again, you know, there, there aren't a ton of, and, and with him and Joshua, it's basically him trying to get away from Joshua or ignoring Joshua, and then the two of them kind of getting along, and so, yeah, not a lot of different things he has to portray directly in the character. There, there's a lot under the surface, which is also something he can do really well. I wish I had a copy of Cyborg to, to review. I may have to see if I can get one, because that is a movie that is very much him showing that there's there's definite pain behind that, you know, underneath the surface there. But he's not... In Universal Souls of the Return, he has to grieve some, and that is not necessarily something he can do really well, but just making it clear that there's a lot of pain that that he can do very nicely please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content